Is the never ending seller's market for real estate finally dead? Why can't you just die already? That's what we're here to find out. Let's go. If you're new here, new to me, and my name is Paul, and I make videos like this one about all things real estate. So if you like that sort of thing, you should probably subscribe to the channel and tick the little bell so you know what's going on in the world of real estate. It's also the logical thing to do, and you seem like a logical human, being that you did click on this video in the first place. And if you'd like to buy or sell a house, reach out to me, because I am a full-time real estate agent, and I can help you really anywhere. I can help you find an agent in your state if you're not looking in my home state of Michigan. But if you're looking in Michigan, definitely reach out. All my contact information is below. All right, so in this video, we are talking about three different things. We're talking about what happened to cause the madness that we've been experiencing lately. We're gonna talk about what's happening right now. And then we're gonna talk about what's gonna happen in the future. Talk about the future. No! The future of real estate as we know it. I'm gonna get my crystal ball out. Call me Crystal Ball Paul. Get the t-shirt, Crystal Ball Paul. All right, so let's go back in time like Marty McFly to the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was talking about how people would not be buying real estate. I heard it from everyone. Like, oh, real estate's gonna die. Nobody's gonna buy real estate. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? I kept saying that that wouldn't be true. Turns out everyone wanted to move at the exact same time. And when everyone wanted to move, no one wanted to sell. So this is simple supply and demand stuff. I've talked about it over and over again on my channel. When everyone wants to move and no one wants to sell, people end up paying way more for houses because supply and demand, right? So that combined with some of the lowest interest rates in history caused just mad, crazy panic. It didn't matter what the house looked like, people were gonna overpay for it. Yeah. I'll take the ugly one. I have been helping people generate multiple offers on homes for the past nine years, but this has been something like no one has ever experienced before. If you have been involved in any of this bidding madness that's happened over the past couple of years, let me know in the comments below. Give me, give me some context to what I'm saying. Tell people about what you've experienced. All right, so that's what happened. That brings us to today what's happening right now. So a few years later, the interest rates are starting to rise and we're still seeing a lot of bidding on houses, but it's a little bit different. You've got less buyers bidding on the same number of homes because those raising interest rates have knocked a lot of the buyers out. People who probably shouldn't have been buying in the first place. They're not in these price ranges. Houses that had like 30 offers are now getting like five to 10 offers. Still a lot, it's still hard to buy, but it's just not as hard as it was. Truthfully, when you have like 30 offers on a house, it's not 30 amazing offers, it's like one or two that are amazing, and then the rest are just like mediocre. Like Tinder. According to the National Association of Realtors, there's actually more and more homes coming on the market every month. Now, it is not like this flood of homes. It's not a ton of homes that are coming on the market, but it is more homes. So now you have less buyers, slightly more homes, so it's making it a little bit easier to jump into the market. Just like pumping the bricks, just pumping them, just a little bit, slowing it down. Slow it down now. All right, so now the future of real estate. Can I get my sunglasses on here? Hold on. Going into the future, future of real estate. So what's gonna happen in the years ahead? I think that prices will stay high, so we're not going to see prices drop suddenly. This isn't a bubble, it's not gonna burst. Prices didn't like all of a sudden just balloon and then everything's gonna explode and your house is gonna be worth nothing. Prices will stay high and we'll have more and more houses coming on the market, but competition will slow. If you were hoping for a crash, that's not gonna happen. No bubble, can't pop it, can't stop it. If you're a seller, this is actually great for you. Now, instead of having 30 offers that are whatever, a lot of garbage, you're gonna have a few offers that are super strong that actually wanna buy your house really badly. Now, as long as your real estate agent knows how to price their house properly, you will still have multiple offers on your house, so don't worry about that. All the crazy sales that we saw in the past couple of years, those are going to set the bar for the new home values. But again, what we're going to see is less offers. This is like the perfect time for anyone who missed out before to jump into the market. Your price range may have to change. So if you're going after $900,000 houses, you may have to go for the six to $700,000 houses now. That's just the reality of things because that's what your price range should be in the first place. But the days of any home listed by any real estate agent attracting a ton of offers is going to be dead and gone. Dead and gone. Didn't Justin Timberlake sing a song like that? Like, dead and gone? I think something like that. Dead 
So what do you think? Do you think that the seller's market madness is dead and gone like I said? Let me know in the comments below. If not, let me know about that too. And if you're looking to make a move to the Metro Detroit area and looking for a place to live, check out some of these other videos and playlists around here and I'll see you there.